when you talk about developing an elite passing game, you know, I think there are some key factors that you have to be willing, um, you know, to have. And the first is you have to be willing to give the quarterback complete autonomy. Um, and this is something I think you really have to be sold out on doing. And uh, because at the end of the day, as coaches, it's impossible um, to call the right play all the time at the right moment. And now defenses, you know, um, you know, they're they're all about how what do they what do they want to do? They want to change the picture on you pre-snap. Everybody's running a lot of combo coverages. It's really hard, you know, as a play caller to be right all the time. And essentially to me, what you're doing is you're just you're allowing the quarterback not to just go out there and make up plays, but you're allowing him to call plays that you would all normally call in that situation. You're just giving him the opportunity to do it at the best moment. The other thing it allows you to do is it allows you to attack the defense within the play. I've always said this. I think you're, you're going to be in a bad position as a coach if you're getting into the point where you're reactionary. You know, so like, for example, you know, if you're trying to react, well, hey, I called this play thinking that, you know, they were going to, um, you know, be in this coverage. And then the next play, you're trying to, all right, attack what the defense just did. Well, now you're on the back of your heels, right? So um, by giving your quarterback complete autonomy, you give him the ability within the play, you know, to be able to attack the defense um, in a way um, that's going to allow you to be efficient, right? So, and when I say complete autonomy, I mean in two ways, right? One is give him the ability to change concepts, right? So like, for example, what I've always told people, and they, and because a lot of times people will ask, well, you know, how are you going to implement this? You know, how do I, I'm just not comfortable. So I always tell them, like, look, take, take whatever you feel like is your best, you know, zone concept that you love, that you feel is, is a, is a, is a winner, right? And then take one man concept that you believe in, that you feel like if I get man coverage and I saw it as a coach, this is what I would call and if I got zone coverage as a coach, this is what I would call. And I say this, and I tell them this all the time. Just choose one zone play, one man beater play. And tell your quarterback, listen, hey, if we call a zone play and they're in man coverage, this is the one man beater you can check. Vice versa, okay, if you call a man beater and they're in zone defense, give him your top zone beater play that you like. And then what I've always told people is this. I said, even if just working off of one, Watch the difference in the efficiency in your offense um, when you give your quarterback, you know, the opportunity, you know, to be able to get into a good play within the play, you know, or, you know, I, and I'll get into this, you know, when we get into some cutups, you know, or some guys, well, let me just see how they react. And then I'll call this play the next time. Well, the problem with that is what if there's a turnover and you never get to the next play. So I'm always um, of the mindset, you need to be able to attack the defense within the play. The other thing is, I think you need to give your quarterback, when you talk about the autonomy, you need the ability to be able to change an individual route. So, you know, whether it's you're in a three by one set, you know, and I think the best way to start this is, you know, if anytime you're in any three by one combination and you got the single receiver, okay, you know, give your quarterback the ability to tag the route instead of you tagging it. And, and, and then some people say, well, coach, I've got an advantage for on the backside. Well, here's the issue with that, right? If a team can watch film study of you and they know every time you're in three by one and you got a single defender, the guy just out there runs a hitch of its soft coverage, you're going to get baited into that, right? So if all the corners got to do is sit back. They're going to play soft, okay? If they know from watching film, the only thing you ever do is run that one hitch route if it's there. Well, they can, you know, corner can play off. You know, he can look his eyes off and inside and make you think it's zone. And then right as the ball is snapping, wait for the quarterback's shoulder to turn and hand separate, which is always an indicator for the defense that the ball is going to come out and break on the ball and either intercept it or either it's a bang, bang play and your quarter, your receiver doesn't catch it or it's either he gets hit and it's tipped up in the air and then it's a turnover. Um, you know, if they can watch film, they don't know what's going to come. You know, you may tell the guy to run a slant or a hitch or a stop. And now they know that they can't, you know, they don't necessarily want to run up, you know, because you may be running a slant or you may be running a go. 
um, which is why I think it's best to give your quarterback the ability to be able to just see the leverage of the corner and then make a decision, um, you know, in terms of what route, you know, you know, that he wants to, to that he, that he wants to run. Right. Um, and then again, uh, if you're in a two by two set, which you'll see on some of these cutups we're going to get into, um, you know, giving your quarterback the ability just to be able to change, you know, one person. So like, we'll kind of get into some examples here, right? So like, I think about this play here, like in this, we were playing Indiana and the, the play that we had called that was sent in was 95, right? Which is what we call Y cross. And, you know, now in my opinion, you know, 95 is a play that's good versus any defense zone or man, right? But typically most people run it, it's a zone beater. Well, you may look at this and you say, all right, coach, you know, some people run the out, some people run the sale, okay, the, the corner, to the field is obviously in man, you know, some people say, well, coach, but well, there's no need to change the play, right? Uh, you know, you can just throw the sail ball right here, the corners in man, or if you're running out, hey, you're gonna get a six, seven, eight yard, or maybe a 10 yard gain. Well, in this instance right here, because the quarterback has autonomy, he looks out there, okay? He sees, all right, they're in a cover one uh, defense, right? The safety is a middle of the field, closed look. He's also off the hash, all right? He knows they're in man coverage, and he also sees that the corner, all right, has got is playing inside leverage on the outside receiver. Okay, so he looks out there. He looks to the right. He gives the receiver a signal. Okay, he's now has been able to indicate to him that hey, I've changed the play. This receiver sees it, and now instead of running ninety five, he runs a stop pump. And again, if you look over to the left, yeah, I mean, it could have been an out route thrown. It would have been a positive gain on the play, but by giving the quarterback autonomy right here, now you just went from a 12 yard gain to a touchdown. And here's an example. Quarterback looks over there. You can see right there, that's autonomy. He's giving him the ability, giving him a signal. Hey, I want to change the play based on what I see from the defense. Okay. He tells him over the left, Hey, y'all still run the play. And now it's a touchdown as opposed to just a positive gain on the 